Hello and welcome to another edition of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. Before we get going, what are we drinking? <laughs> We're drinking and gonna feel this one. It's Carfax Abbey Belgian Ale with English hops. Percentage? <laughs> Eight and a half percent. There we go. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about kind of a topic that's been floating around quite a bit on the mm -hmm. internet is yep. um, the importance of having and collecting physical media. It's a good idea to have at least some in your possession. <laughs> yeah. Um, recently Netflix has uh, just introduced that tier system and all that shit. Now the lowest, cheapest cost ha is going to have commercials in it. And then you have to pay more to get the higher tiers where they don't have commercials and they have more content, etc., etc. Yeah. It just sort of sparked it in us that, you know, we have vast libraries of physical media. That's kind of what we like. That's what we're into. So here's 10 reasons why it's good to have physical media. <laughs> and the first one jumps right off of that. Yeah. Is you don't have to rely on your internet connection being stable mm -hmm. going down on you and you don't have to rely on a streaming service to have the things that you want to watch on it yeah you're not at their mercy right yeah and that's the thing is you're very much at the mercy of these streaming companies they keep upping the prices on you every year mm -hmm. so they get you that way your favorite shows can like just disappear for no fucking reason and pop up on another another platform. You're like, oh, well, I gotta go pay for this now because I wanna watch this over here. Like, yeah. and, and, and again, the cost that keeps going up because of that. Yeah, it's like that problem that you ran into when we were gonna watch. We're supposed to watch one of those movies for a review. Baby Blood was or one Baby of them. Blood, yeah. And so you already had the one streaming site, but then the the movie was actually running from another site through the one you had. Right, So yeah. you had to get the other one. It's like, what the fuck? Bastards, like, they, they got you. Yeah. You know, they got you by the balls. They got you by the balls. <clears throat> As opposed to if you own a physical copy of the movie, you can just fucking watch it whenever you want. Exactly, as long as you give it back. Put that bear down! I told you I'm gonna cut it loose! Then fucking do it! I'm gonna cut it loose! God damn you! God damn you! You're, you're, <laughs> you're, you're, you know, your, your internet goes down. You know, it doesn't happen often these days. Grab a DVD, a Blu-ray, 4K, VHS, whatever you want. An album. Mm -hmm. Put it on, and that's your entertainment for the night. If you need to be entertained by something. <laughs> right, yeah. Star Trek is another, like, good example of this, where... We're lucky in Canada to hear we still have Star Trek on Netflix. Our American friends, it was on Netflix, it got pulled. So now, if you want to watch Star Trek, you got to go pay for another fucking streaming service. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, for me personally, like, if once Star Trek leaves Canadian Netflix, I may not keep it. Because it's one of the only things I watch on Netflix anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Point number two. The fact that you can borrow and share your media with... People that you know, friends, yeah. right? There's a good chance if you're a collector, you're friends with collectors. <laughs> yeah, right? exactly. Um, like, I have Quantum Leap, and I remember, like, a long time ago, me and Adam did this thing where we would buy each other a season. I'd buy Adam a season of Kung Fu, and he'd buy me a season of Quantum Leap. For our birthdays. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the only one I'm missing is uh, the fourth one, actually, the fourth season. But anyways... I have the Quantum Leaps. If Adam wants to watch them... Which I do. <laughs> which I do. I, I, I messaged him like the uh, a week ago saying, I bet, can I borrow Quantum Leap? I have a hankering for it. <laughs> yeah. I said, yeah, come on over and get them. And it's that simple. You know, I don't have any streaming services uh, that have Quantum Leap on it, so... Yeah. But I got my best friend right here <laughs> who could lend it to me, you know? That's right. Same thing goes with, for me. I got some things that you don't have. Mm -hmm. uh, TV shows, movies. You don't have to hunt for it and try to download it or buy it yourself. You bore it from me. Exactly. You might have an investment on your hands. That's right. Case in point, I remember buying some of these records. Now, Prince albums, for example, four bucks. Four ninety nine for a Prince record when I bought it. Yeah, you can't find Prince records for four ninety nine anymore, man. <laughs> as soon as Prince died, at least thirty bucks, sometimes fifty. 
bucks for records for deceased artists, you know? Yeah. Same yeah. thing goes with like Bowie, man. Like I got a bunch of Bowie albums. Four bucks for Bowie's low. You're not gonna find this for four bucks anymore. Yeah. I basically have an investment on my hands because I bought them when it, the media was considered dead. Yeah. Right, you know? That's right. Um, I got a bunch too. I got a bunch of ACDC albums that you you simply can't even find anymore because nobody's fucking se uh, like giving them up. Parting with them, yeah. And then if you do, they're they're worth a fortune now. Yeah. Why I don't know. Like especially for ACDC, but well, I think it's because trends happen, right? Like, yeah. like when when CDs came out and everyone everyone got rid of their vinyl. Fuck you! You buy vinyl at a used record store for you know couple of bucks yeah yeah you can't buy vinyl for a couple of bucks anymore man because the demand right exactly. supply and demand yeah well and they're not being manufactured anymore so there's no supply and now it's a trendy thing so there's demand so price goes up that's right and with vhs too right vhs has recently been spiking it's gotten back into the mainstream again yep. it was dead yeah like after when they uh, stopped making VCRs around what, 05, 06 or something like that? Yeah, they made their last VCR around 07 or something like that. Yeah, yeah and like, and then, you know, VHS sort of tanked, and then 10, 15 years later, it's starting to come back. It's hot again, right? Yep. And, you know, and we do because we bought a lot of our VHS when they were cheap. We have a lot of investments because now that stuff is worth money. That's right. The nostalgia factor of it, right? I mean, there's nothing better then putting in an old VHS tape from our childhood, yeah, you know, and you see those old trailers start to play, and it just bring, yeah. it just takes you back. It makes you yeah. warm and fuzzy inside. It's watching it the way you remembered it. I always remember when Labyrinth came out on DVD. Yeah, and I got the DVD, put it in, and it was like it's not the same because the trailers in be before the movie. It's not the same. It wasn't the same viewing experience because those things were part of the viewing experience, mm -hmm. you know. And case in point, this exact, you know, this ed edition of Labyrinth, it's specifically the Embassy Home Entertainment one, is the only edition that has the trailers that I remember as a kid. Yeah. So if you want to relive your past, you need this exact one right <laughs> and it's a good trailer in the beginning is it's the trailer for the name of the rose yeah. and it's all scary and yeah. everything too right yeah. the three amigos on vhs like me and this was one of the very first movies that me and adam bonded over when we were four or five years old when we first met yeah <laughs> i mean this goes back a movie like that goes back to our our roots the very beginning yeah and that fucking movie has the Sports Illustrated beginning, the, yeah. the trailer for it. With the bat and everything, yeah. and the, making Mr. Right. Trailer, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you see that, and it's like, yeah. And if it's not there, you know it. Yeah. And you feel it. The, the like, Three Amigos is a movie that I refuse to watch in any format besides VHS because I want that experience. Yeah. I don't want the other experience of not viewing it without those trailers. Yeah, you, you know? need that. People don't want to let go of their childhood, you know? And so it's good to revisit it every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. Reason number five to collect physical media is there's a lot of stuff that's lost to old formats of media. That's right. Movies, for example, there's a lot of movies lost to VHS. If you don't have that version, like you may be able to street, you know, find it on YouTube or whatever, mm -hmm. but like you have a piece of lost media. Like that's pretty fucking cool. Like just for example, I always remembered seeing this movie sitting in the movie store as a kid. Never rented it. I always <laughs> wanted to because I was a big John Belushi fan as a kid. Never rented it. And I found it like a couple of weeks ago at a thrift store. I bought it. Like I've always kind of been curious about this and took it home, looked it up. It's lost to VHS. This right. has never had a digital release. Yep. So you, you know, the only way to watch it is on VHS. Now I can finally watch it. It's you pretty know? cool. It's pretty cool. And apparently it's kind of a... <laughs> bad taste. Ba done in bad taste. I tried watching it. It kind of doesn't depict John Belushi very well. It's like, it's, <laughs> oh, no wonder it was panned. But yeah. I have a piece of lost media, you know? Yep, yep. And that's that goes like... 
for a lot of stuff we have, like a lot of the VHS tapes and everything, when you look it up, there's like lists on the internet you can find. And it's like, we have lots of stuff actually yeah. that you can, you would never be able to find on DVD yeah. or anything that's come out in recent history, yeah. you know, which is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Another example actually is this movie, in, very cool, interesting movie called Jack Be Nimble, which it's now available on, uh, I think, Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. uh, through vinegar syndrome, but when I bought it, when I found it, it was not available. This is the only way you can watch the movie when I f actually found it. Yeah. So it was like, yeah, awesome. I yeah. It's a little piece of history, you know. And, and there's there there are the odd movies. It's actually kind of rare, but there are the odd movies that have never even been put to digital format at all. Like, really? You can't, e you can't even stream them. Right. And so that's the only way to own them. In music too, like think of all the weird underground one-off bands that released a record, yeah, one record on vinyl or something that was never on like a main label. That's lost to vinyl. There's, yeah, like you th go go to your local thrift store and look through it, and you see all those fucking, you know. Mon Pa like polka polka, polka band <laughs> like that was will never be released digitally. <laughs> yeah. The only way you can have that shitty Mon Pa polka band is by buying that vinyl. That's right, yeah. You know, so there's a lot of cool, you know. <laughs> it may not be great, but it's lost to that medium. Point number six we gotta make is that you can find a lot of unaltered versions or also watch or listen to a lot of the media as it was intended to when it was originally released, right? Exactly. And I think one of the biggest, biggest things we can mention here, and I know a lot of people know what we're thinking, Star Wars. Yeah. You can't stream or even buy digitally on Blu-ray, DVD, whatever, the unaltered versions of Star Wars. Yeah, that's that's probably one of the hallmarks, yeah. really, right? Yeah, that's... like, if you want to watch Star Wars the way it was originally released, you have to have either the Laserdisc, mm -hmm. uh, if you want the best-looking version, or the VHS. VHS. Yeah. You know, in case in point, the widescreen edition. <laughs> yeah. If you want to see Star Wars not, you know, in full screen, but in widescreen, well, I happen to have the widescreen versions of relatively unaltered. Yeah, you know, yeah. There's always going to be a little bit of, you know, tweaking here and there on each release, but that doesn't have all the bullshit CGI, Jabba the Hutt bullshit, <laughs> you know, changing the whole ending of Return of the Jedi, where it's like different actors as the yeah. ghosts. Yeah, like, fuck off. They changed the whole song at the, re you know, it's yeah. not the, the Jub Jub song or whatever it's supposed to be, like, yeah. if you want to watch that, you have to have the fucking VHS. It's funny, remember that article that I sent you of that, just, I forget the guy's, I don't know what the guy's name was, it's just a random article I read where the title of it was In Search of the Original Release yeah. of yeah. Such and Such. Yeah. And then yeah, I sent that to you, remember? Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. oh yeah, this is this is an interesting read. And in that article, that guy basically just shit all over VHS. He's like, well, you can... <laughs> it was interesting because it was like, his whole thing was that he was in search of the originals, but yet all he did was downgrade VHS. Yeah, he, he was said, like, because it's old and... yeah. I remember, like, yeah, I remember that. It was like in search of the unaltered versions, but I won't look, even consider VHS. Yeah, and it's like, okay. Well, then you're not going to find it. Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> and you're, a, you're an idiot. Yeah. If you want to look for it and find it, that's how you're going to find it. That's yeah. the only way you're going to find yeah. it. Or Laserdisc, in the it's, case of Star Wars, right? That's the best yeah. version for unaltered Star Wars is Laserdisc. Reason number seven you should have some physical media in your possession is special features. You can't get special features streaming a movie. Mm -hmm. You can't get the director actor commentary. You can't get the making of vignettes. Yeah. Deleted scenes, alternate scenes that you'll get in DVDs and Blu-rays. Like all that stuff has a lot of value to it. You know, exactly. especially if you're a fan. Yeah. And it gives you a different viewing experience. Like, 
I remember this past Halloween, I was like, I've seen all these movies so many times. I made it my mission to finally watch all these movies they have on DVD with the commentary. Right. Because why not? You, yeah, just you, to learn more. You right? bought the DVD with the commentary, put that to use, and you learn so much more. Yeah, yeah. Records, like LPs, vinyl, with the liner notes and the big artwork and all that yeah. stuff. You don't get that with a digital copy. You don't get all the the fun stuff when you open up the record and read the liner notes, yeah. read all the lyrics, all that stuff. It's something you can hold and... Yeah like have an experience with it's right? a piece of artwork a lot of times yeah. a lot of times the the artists or the studios or whatever have released these things to make them look a certain way yeah. to make them look captivating one thing i gotta mention is this who cd that i got i spent <laughs> 25 fucking dollars on this yeah cds were expensive back in the day especially at hmv and apparently they're coming back why is yeah. anybody asking for hmv to come back i'm not they're fucking overpriced shit but anyways this was a special edition and it had it actually had a whole fucking booklet in here read this fucking thing and you can learn so much about the who you don't get that with yeah. anything online right you fucking buy something you're not going to get a booklet attached to it yeah <laughs> yeah and same thing like when uh when gary newman had all of his albums re-released uh by beggar's banquet there were special edition albums and each one of the booklet sleeves had a whole write up many pages of the making of the album yeah you i remember buying the albums putting them on my headphones and my discman at the time <laughs> yeah but on the bus ride home from the store, reading about the making of the album through the booklet. Right. Point number eight. It's a fun hobby. And it also equates to the thrill of the hunt, too, when yeah. you're looking at thrift stores and trying to find, you know, that little gem, yeah. that diamond in the rough somewhere, oh, yeah. all the fucking shit that's there. Yeah, it, it, it is a fun fucking hobby. And it speaking is. of thrill of the hunt, diamond in the rough, we brought it up already. <laughs> yeah. This Labyrinth uh, VHS, for example, I've, I've been to hunt for this for ages. Yeah. And it was available on eBay to buy. And I remember looking at it a bunch, almost clicking on it and buying it. But like, no, it's something I want to find in the wild. Yeah. Saying, I found this. I didn't just go online and bought it. I found it it's like finding treasure it's like exactly. it's something it's to be proud of i found it that's right and not just this too but any like nowadays especially horror movies in on vhs format seem to be all the rage yeah. so now it's like you get excited when you find the one v uh, one horror vhs tape yeah at a thrift store it's like whoa okay even if you have it you still buy you still it, get it. Yeah. <laughs> just because yeah. yeah um but, like, man, there was that, like, when you get a good haul, like, not just a single, but when yeah. you come home with a good haul, your knapsack is full of shit. Yeah. And you lay it out on the couch no or on feeling. the floor. There's no feeling like that. <laughs> no, it's great. It's like, ah, look at all the shit I found, right? And this it's, stuff is awesome. It's, it's like a high. Yeah. You know, it's it like is. a high for, for collectors, at least. Yeah. yeah. And for me, I like a good deal. I'll give you 30 cents for them sealed VHS tapes. I'll take 50. 50 my ass. I like a good deal. I like to I like to bargain too, right? And so there's that on top of it. Especially at the fucking flea markets with these yeah. fucking guys who charge a fortune. <laughs> Especially see that people like that I don't mind trying to knock down. Yeah. Because I th I think they deserve it. They do. Like they yeah. shouldn't be asking twenty dollars for a f some generic VHS tape. What are you doing? Yeah. That's ridiculous. Like I'll give you thirty cents. Reason number nine, you should have some physical media on your hands, is if you don't have a whole bunch of streaming services that you want to pay for, and you just get the free ones like Tubi, mm -hmm. and you know like YouTube for example. While well, there's commercials there. If you have the movie in your possession, you can pop it in and be guaranteed there's no commercials on that movie. Yeah. <laughs> you put in the album, 
there's no commercials going to happen in between the songs oh. on that album, right? You, you listen to it the way it was supposed to be listened to. No interruptions. Put in the album. Yeah, exactly. Put in the goddamn album. Point number 10. They're a talking piece. They're a conversational item, right? Yeah. <laughs> and not just, not even the media itself. I even go a step further, the player. Yeah. I've been on the hunt for a Betamax for years now, actually, yeah. like, I don't know, five years or whatever. And every so often one will come up and then I'll, then I'll be unloading on Adam, right? Yeah. Not his person wants hundreds of dollars for this Betamax. What the fuck? They're nuts. They're crazy. Yeah. But it's a talking piece. Yeah. Right? It is. And, like, people, when people walk into our houses. Yeah. And they, they come into our rooms and they see what's in here. It's like, wow. And then, like, every single piece in this room is a talking piece. Yeah. When we have parties and our friends come over, we hang out in this room, and we just stand here and like, oh, this movie. And they'll pull it out and we'll talk about this. I remember when. And then, or... oh, oh, this movie. And it's, it's literally me and you and Carl <laughs> can stand in this room for hours and just, like, talk about yeah. things that are on the shelf. Yeah. Just like even people who aren't into this stuff, right? They're, it's a talking piece even for them, because it's shit that even they remember, but they may not be into collecting or owning it. Right? And they haven't seen it for years. That's, that's they right. They walk in, they're like, look at this, I remember this. That's right. And it's, you know, it's fun to show off and say, look what I did. I did <laughs> this, you know? And you came over when, you know, we had a blast when I moved into this house and I had to set all this shit up, you came over and helped me set it up. <laughs> That's right. Hey man, come inside. Help me set up the nerd room. We had a blast, yeah. I had fun. So that's our top 10 uh, reasons to own physical media. Whether you want it to be VHS, CDs, vinyl, DVDs, 4K, whatever your jam is, yeah. it doesn't matter. Um, there's a piece that is lost when it gets turned into a digital format, right? When it you, gets, you can't touch. Yeah, when it gets yeah. put up yeah. into, into a cloud. Yeah. That you can, you don't have ownership really, of it. I think of uh, Young Frankenstein, or the original Frankenstein, when the monster hears the music, and he's trying to touch it. Yeah, it's like that. Yeah, yeah. You, you, it's there, but it's never but it's not, in your hand. It's not there. Yeah. Yeah. And the sad thing about it is that you pay for it, right? Yeah. People pay for it, and it's never. Yeah. It's never there. Until next time, happy hunting for your physical media, whatever that may be. And until next time, keep drinking.